My special guest this morning, what a treat today for me. The work is done. The New Zealanders have honoured the Silver Fern. The years of struggle and courage have brought triumph. A special triumph. The finest, perhaps, of all. The triumph of the human spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr Paul Holmes. And this is not, this is not going to be this is your life because you'd have to interview yourself and that's the complete wank. All right, we're not doing that. But basically what's happened, Paul, some of your family, friends and colleagues, you gave us a fright and we thought we would like to celebrate and acknowledge your great work over the years and we wanted to say thank you. So I'm going to invite you to come up here right now, sit down with me and we're going to have a few speeches, a few drinks and a cuddle. And then you're going to dinner. First up from the Auckland Regional Helicopter Trust <laughs> um, is Mr Murray Bolton. Look, Paul, we are so proud to have you on our trust. You, you, you say to Paul, what do you want? He said, we say jump. Paul says how high. He does a fantastic job for us. We're really privileged to have you part of our trust. I want to thank you very much personally, as do the rest of the trustees. You do a fantastic job for us. And lastly, I want to say that I only wear a suit for weddings and funerals. Now I can say weddings and funerals and Paul Holmes. So thanks. Thanks very much. Well done, mate. Paul, thank you for everything you've done for us. And it's um, a long time. We have nearly 21 years um, since we began. And uh, in the early stages, Rosie and the others that were incredibly passionate about the Starship, Paul was very positive about it on the airwaves. And that definitely got everything going, got people behind it. Um, the passion that exists in the Starship today is significant. We had a lot of problems with New Zealand actually understanding that this was the National Children's Hospital. Everyone thought that they had a children's hospital everywhere. But today we raise a lot of money, thanks to people like Paul, who sort of got the momentum going. So Paul, there's a lot of children, 150,000 a year, kids go through the hospital, some incredibly ill, um, some in there quickly and out again. And one long-term patient, Kayla, has done a painting for you. And uh, she's been there a long time. She's a 16-year-old. So this is for you and your dear family. But thank you for everything you've done for the kids of New Zealand and really appreciate it. Thanks a lot, mate. Thank you. Thanks to the work of Paul and to Chaz and others that, that uh, really the Paralympics in New Zealand was put on the map. The Paralympic family and the people of New Zealand are eternally grateful to you for that. And, you know, Paul, it's amazing to think where, where things have got to, isn't it? And, you know, you played a, a leading role in that. Paul's involvement with Paralympics really started back in the 80s, which is an awfully long time ago, um, but it really was brought to the forefront in the documentary that Paul and Chaz did in Barcelona in 1992. And, and that really brought it to the public's attention what Paralympic sport was about and what could be done. For me, it had a real personal attachment in that only months prior to that, I um, had a benign spinal tumour removed, and kind of at that time, life was almost over, and as I felt it. And what you did with that documentary is it, it, it changed things. It gave me that sort of will to want to do something, to set some goals, to achieve, to have passion. And four years later on, we met in Atlanta in a hot, steamy place. Sounds like a Mills and Boone kind of opening, doesn't it? Really? Um, in a, um, a hot, steamy place called Sauna Montgomery. Around. <laughs> around <his> beach, <laughs> and um, I paid a small part in the documentary that you produced in Atlanta and um, there were two parts of that that were fulfilled for me and that was the goals and, and the dream that was fulfilled but the passion and the inspiration to do more in Paralympics never ended just like it hasn't ended for you after three decades which is a huge commitment um, on behalf of all New Zealand Paralympians and from the bottom of my heart thank you very much. Stella Trust was formed about four years ago to tackle the methamphetamine or PEEP problem in this country through drug education presentations in schools and raising public awareness uh, of, of the issue. So Paul, you were the influence that got us started on this project and you were there for us when we needed your help. We're very grateful to you for all the help that you've given us for the last three or four years. Tonight, we are here for you. 
Thank you. We're very pleased that you've got through your last health scare and wish you good luck for the future. Brilliant to have the chance to, uh, to honour to honor you, Paul. Uh, brilliant to see you here. Brilliant to see that photograph up there. And it, 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 uh, it, it reminds us of, all, uh, of what life is all about. It's from your uh, article called My Road Back From Hell. Uh, and it says, um, you know, looking at it today, uh, I've written it in good health, full of beans again, looking out on a golden spring day, the cold wind has gone, and there's so much love in my life. What more could a man want? And I just think that is a fantastic, uh, a fantastic attitude, Shiva Paul, and, and uh, all credit to you. When you marry someone, as they say, in sickness and in health, but sometimes we never know how big that challenge is going to be. Deborah's challenge was the ultimate, and it's a great tribute to her that Paul is here today Alive, well, and cheekier than ever. She understood when she took Paul on that he, he was a totally <laughs> original, <laughs> original soul and it would never be mediocre and dull. He is loyal, generous to a fault, passionate, funny, poignant, complicated, clever, never dull, and always with his heart on his sleeve. A heart, I'm pleased to say, which is healthy and strong after a major tune-up. Some of the charities he helped establish and brain throughout the country is the New Zealand Breast Cancer Foundation, Laura Ferguson Trust, the Aotea Centre Performing Arts Trust, the Prince of Wales Trust, and of course, Starship. There is no one quite like him in New Zealand, and there never will be again. I cherish his friendship, and I thank his darling Deborah for her magnificent care. He's a most generous man, and God, who else would know but his two-year younger brother. <laughs> generous man and I owe him a hell of a lot. He probably doesn't know it. He does now. Well, I do. <laughs> <laughs> know how much I owe him, I mean. And the other thing I was going to say was um, I was going to talk, about, talk to Deborah and say thank you, Deborah. Thank you for getting to here tonight. So it was wonderful. I, I can't believe it. I had no idea. No idea. Thank you, Deborah. You're such a bloody... Good. Deviant. <laughs> I want to thank you all so much for turning up and for the incredibly gracious things that you've said. This has completely caught me unawares, ladies and gentlemen. It was extremely emotional walking in and seeing you all. I want to say, Deborah, you are the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And... Uh, you didn't buy into all of this. You didn't buy into prostate cancer and its legacies. You didn't buy into the heart operation, ambulances coming at all hours of the night to the place in Hawke's Bay. You didn't buy into that. And I think I can say that since the heart operation, we've become, if anything, closer and closer and closer. And it's so easy. And I was thinking the last few days, God, my marriage, this marriage, I, I'm such a lucky man. This, this, this is so easy, so happy, so positive. And Millie, I am so... You don't know idea how proud your old dad is. <laughs> eh? Love I love you, sweetheart. And you look fabulous tonight. Yeah. I want to thank you all for coming along. It's a fabulous uh, business and we've got the other thing to hear. And I just love you, I love you, I love you so much. And thank you, Deborah, so much. Thank you, all of you again. Thank you. Good evening again from the Sydney Paralympic Games where in the past couple of days the New Zealand medal tally has continued to build dramatically. Gold, silver, bronze, whatever you want. And that's because of the, the courage, the determination and the sheer will to win of the New Zealand Paralympic team. And what better way to begin for a team depicted here as something akin to the All Blacks, the Wheel Blacks Haka. Wheelchair rugby is about gladiators and chariots. They go for it. It is a tough, 
tough sport and it's played by tough men. They are deeply serious about their wheelchair rugby. At an event like this, what does it tell you about the possibilities of this able sport? Oh, the possibilities are, uh, uh, are only just beginning to get realised now. In the compact file, sailor Andrew May from Christchurch. So you've come to the Paralympics having to get into a, a boat that's foreign to you. Yeah, I chartered this boat from an Australian company and we came over on the 23rd of last month and picked up the boat and started working with it from there. It's not what you've been born with, it's what you choose to bear. It's not how big your share is, it's how much you can share. It's not the fights you dreamed of, it's those you really fought. It's not what you've been given It's what you do with what you've got The work is done. The New Zealanders have honoured the Silver Fern. The years of struggle and courage have brought triumph. A special triumph. The finest, perhaps, of all. The triumph of the human spirit. Hi Paul, well I'm sorry I can't be with you this evening. Uh, I know that they put together a little party for you and it's great to see you back uh, in Auckland, back on your feet and back to top health. Uh, you're a person that's made a huge contribution to New Zealand. Most people uh, remember you and know you as a great personality from the radio, uh, from TV, for the fascinating interviews and the years and years of dedicated service you gave to Newstalk ZB. Uh, and of course to Homes Tonight. Uh, but I also know you as someone that's a very passionate New Zealander that's made a remarkable difference to an incredible number of charities. I know the many discussions we've had about your work with the Stella Trust and your real desire to see P eradicated from New Zealand and I join with you uh, in your ambitions to do that. I also know you as somebody that's cared a lot about issues like Erebus uh, and uh, having justice resolved as you see it. And um, for, all, for all the causes that you've taken up and all of the work that you've done, you've earned the respect of four and a half million New Zealanders. So I'm sorry I can't be with you tonight, um, but make sure you enjoy the evening and um, make sure you take a second to step back and think about all the remarkable things you've done because this evening you're with a lot of friends who simply just want to do that, raise their glass to you and say thank you.